time. I've gone to many um, uh, things and I've done things with them. So it's a long-term relationship and it's, some, it's a place I believe in because it's very supportive of photographers. It's a resource. So let me get back to my script here. Uh, uh, so I love that, that we have su supporting organization run by photographers like Jim over there. We will always have a board member on these webinars with us, making sure the dialogue is what you need it to be. I'll be inviting helpful guests each week to join us as we dive into what we need to know right now. Today, I'm joined with photographer and APA LA board member, Jim Purdom. Hi, Jim. Hi, Andrea. Thanks for doing this with us. Um, at APA, we are big fans of yours and big fans of your Instagram, Ask Stern Rep, where you answer a ton of questions for our whole photo community. And so we thought this would be a great partnership. And now with all the COVID-19 concerns going on, I think we all have a ton of brand new questions that we're asking ourselves. Yeah. So we thought this would be a great way to get the conversation going. So why don't we go ahead and answer some questions that have been submitted by our audience today. Yes, and we want more of your questions. So keep them coming in. If we can get to them today, we will. Otherwise, we will get to them. So uh, first question, Jim, this is for you and all photographers. Are you shooting any personal work during this crisis? Uh, for me, I haven't been so far. I think um, just kind of adjusting to the new reality and sort of just getting a sense of it has been enough. I feel like when I'm spurred into action, I will be, and I'm just trying to be okay with that. I was... I was doing a lot of personal work in 2019, which involved uh, a lot of travel and finding people that I thought were interesting and living life differently. And so I'm not able to do any of that right now. So I'm just trying to yeah. be comfortable with um, what I can do. I like that, being comfortable with what you can do. I mean, that we're all different and every photographer is different. My point of view on this is to bring out the best in each photographer some are going to come up with new ideas and some are going to be shooting personal testing or trying to get more for their portfolio at this time. Whatever time it is, it's a big, important time in our lives. And that is my point to, to this question is that we should all have a plan, whether it's a personal plan, just make something out of this time. Um, and just to note, clients really do want to see your work right now and they want to see what, what you're experiencing right now in this crisis time. So they are interested if that motivates you. Yeah, it makes sense. So question number two is about insurance and I'm not the um, expert on that. So I reached out to a producer, Michael Horta, and I'm gonna answer this question, but the question is about insurance. Oh, um, whoo. Weird, I don't see the question. I guess we're just getting a lot of questions about insurance. So this is a general question to Michael. From an insurance standpoint, there are no safeguards against COVID-19. Everyone who decides to go on a shoot assumes the risk of being on set. Our standard insurance will cover all the usual, but will not cover COVID-19 related illness. So with that said, everyone on set will be needing to sign a liability release statement and they understand the risk and release both the production company, the photographer, the ad agency, the client from any COVID related issues. We are at the development uh, phase of our set health protocol guide where we will outline all the measures we will take to elevate health standards to the highest possible onset but everyone will need to know there is some risk. The only way to avoid this is to stay home. Thank you, Michael Horta. Michael is who we're having next week as a special guest because a lot of these topics, he will be able to move us through. I also saw, I wanted to note on PhotoPolitik, which is a good website for everybody, is a discussion board on how reps and photographers are getting together to create useful resources about this. So we're just at the beginning and, and so much more will be figured out about these questions. Sure. So question number three, 
Um, what's the best way to start to develop develop a book of commercial work? Jim, how um, did you do that? Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I, I don't think that would be any different now than normal times as far as your thought process and what goes into it. You know, logistics will be different and will change, but it's got to be, I, I think I struggled with this when I first got going, trying to you know, see what the market wants, um, which, yeah, that's relevant, but I think you really need to start with what are the stories you're interested in telling. Um, you can mimic anybody, but if it isn't really coming from a true place of passion for yourself. Did then... you start with the same look that you have now? Mm, no, I, I started out, I started out doing portraits and weddings in Des Moines, Iowa. And, and um, so I, you know, but all, it all adds up. I got a lot of, I think my interacting with people and real people skills from that, um, you know, took pride in. When did it become commercial? Um, I think, you know, it, it became just sort of general commercial just through osmosis of shoot anything and everything. And um, it's funny that, you know, you would shoot somebody's business portrait and then they would call you back to do other things for their business, you know, within capabilities of, you know, all, all types of things like that. And then eventually I got more specialized and uh, moved to Chicago then later to LA. Um, but, you know, I think something we'll get into here too later is I think some of it's com coming full circle. I think that the skills of sort of being a scrapper when I first got going um, are going to be good in this marketplace coming up. That's so. a really good point. And it will. Yeah, the, the word commercial always kind of confuses me because I think it has a bad reputation of being quite cheesy and yeah. forced and salesy, which I don't think is true anymore. You know, ad agencies and big clients, they're, they're choosing very editorial style looking. It's mm -hmm. just, um, I was talking to an art producer friend and she said, I said, what's the difference, commercial and or, uh, editorial? She said, well, art is for art's sake. And I love that because editorial, that kind of sums up, it's art. Where commercial, you are selling a mood. Anyway, it's just to understand those two terms, I find important. And um, the best thing I can recommend to photographers is to educate yourself and research. Who do you like? Find photographers out there that you are motivated by their look and, and learn what does it take um, and really stay true to your own voice. That is most important and going to be your biggest sales tool. And I think more than when I first got going, more and more, I think story is so important to it. Um, yeah. Shooting back in the 90s in Chicago, and it was all about you had one concept and you worked the hell out of it from every angle, and but it was all versions of the same thing. And so your mind really didn't go to developing a story that could be used in a lot of different ways, a lot of different purpose. Um, and I think people now are visually so much more acute to the general public than, than 20 years ago that they're really interested in things that feel more editorial, but, but are yeah. actually advertising. Yes, so which leads back to what I was saying about clients right now are interested in seeing your personal work about right now. Mm -hmm. It's just, they're interested. For sure. Uh, okay, so... During this time, what are you doing to stay sane, positive, creative? What does this new normal look like for you, Jim? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, it's so hard. To, it's such a phrase. What's the new normal? What yeah, does that mean? Yeah. Well, and as far as for work, what will that look like? Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly everything's going to start back really small scale. Um, and I, I've been pitching to just a few people. I've been cautious about this because, you know, does it seem appropriate to be reaching out to people yet? And, um, I already feel like our cold calls to clients or reaching out is all, always, they, they get so much of it that I feel like it's really, uh, in, in normal times, that's a delicate kind of thing. And so I, especially I feel like that now, but I have had a few people reach out to me about that I have certain type type of stock or things like that and you know maybe what's possible so a little bit of back and forth with some clients so I'm sensing that 
okay, pretty soon I'm going to start reaching out to more people on my own, feeling like maybe that's okay. Yeah. Um, I've seen other photographers mention this too, but one thing, I, I rent my house a lot for uh, photo shoots on, to, through a location service for other people's shoots, and I use it for my own. Uh, the layout here is really good. They get a lot of kinds of looks. And so I had one client that um, was like an essential oils uh, company, and they, you know, I, I pitched my teenage daughter, cute kid and nice hands, and could do, you know, holding the oil bottle and, you know, these kind did, of things that I've get actually the job? shot for them. Uh, yeah. Sent them away to the house. Um, still just pitching it at this point, you know, of they, they were like, what's possible? You know, they weren't saying they had a job. Yeah. It was just that wanted to know, should they be thinking? This. And um, yeah. so that's that why way, I, uh, I put that. Yeah. In that way, I feel like what's the new normal is kind of an extension of the old normal because that's what you were doing before. Yeah. And I found the same thing for myself where I'm just doing more of stuff that I wish I had more time for before. And it's allowing me to be really personal with people, which has always been my way of connecting to everyone. But I get to do it more now on LinkedIn and Instagram. I'm like talking to people more. So that's wonderful. And also keeping my, my goal right now, which gives me a job, is to keep my fingers on the pulse, like what's going on which is leading me to do things like this and, and ask Stern rep. And it's kind of been my thing and it helps me to be a better rep. So it's all good for that. I'm also doing some bidding. I got to say there is some solo shooting in the studio. That seems mm -hmm. to be the, the kind of hot market as, as, as well as influencer stuff, stuff of work, stock work, um, home, working from home as you're talking about. So that's yeah. the new norm. Yeah. Well, and I and I don't know what agency producers and people are getting from from their end and art buyers as far as um, do they do they have a lot of needs yet, you know? And we, so it's sort of a back and forth, you know. I I try to kind of put out there, propose how I think we could do these shoots, um, you know. If it's right now during the full lockdown and quarantine, really the only thing I can offer is is my home and some member of my family to be in the photos and. And does that yeah. work for them? There's, there's not much more we can do. As that starts to open up a little bit, I still see kind of approaching a similar angle um, of uh, find real families, uh, real couples that are model or actor couples, or even real people yeah. photographed before, offer them up. Um, so a, a lot of that sort of uh, guerrilla style, I think, could could help on this, this kind of stuff. Yeah. To get, to spurn projects into happening. I think, you know, there's the now of this solo, shoot solo, uh, all of that stay home type of shooting. And then it's the preparation of what comes next. Mm -hmm. And after that, it'll be, okay, what comes next after that? It's a very distinctive stages right now. Right, right. None of us really know, but you can- but That we could spend this time mind. planning. Yeah, think of different scenarios, that kind right. of thing. For sure, but you know, you could see where crew sizes are going to be much smaller. Uh, but then you get into issues of you can't put two talent arm in arm. You can't make a fake family, right? Because no stylist. Your mask, you know. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of issues, a and that'll come. This will come up next week. Michael Horta is the producer who he's had to think all this through, and he's going to have to. Anyway, I'll let that answer that. Um, mm -hmm. Why are there so few reps who include retouchers and digital, digital artists? So I'll answer this. And thank you for the question, Carson. And thanks for getting me on here, Carson. Um, that is because, well, we as reps, I have my clientele and I have to stay on that path with that clientele. So it's a little harder when someone has a different, uh, doing something different than my photographers. I still love it. And I think you got to look at the rep to see if you fit in well with their look, their brand, and who their clients are. That's, I could go on with this answer, but that's part of it. I, I'd have a little bit to add to that. Oh, yeah. Um, the other thing I see happen that sort of takes it out of there is often on the end of the production, the producer, like, like my producer, will want to cash out, right? They want to submit that final billing. 
and retouching can get bogged down and keep extending the job longer. So a lot of times it's broken out separately anyways. And then I think once it's broken out, sometimes they just pass on the option to use my retoucher and will just go in house or it's, it's, it hasn't been rolled into it. It's always kind of like, here's that charge, but we really try to get it built separately, not as part of the main production. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise it could go on for weeks before you can do the final bill which is problematic, so. It is yeah. quite separate. It's like a separate little world. For sure. But anyway, uh, what should a new photographer do to get work versus the established ones? What do you think? Um, I don't know that it's that different. Um, I think you, you have to study the markets you're going after without letting it, without just, following what you think they want. Um, uh, for instance, right now, I, I'm trying to get, trying to do more videos, trying to go into healthcare. So I'm gonna contact some hospitals and some nonprofits just so I can generate more of that kind of work. You know, it's that you Like can't branching out? Yeah, yeah, and, and you can't get it if you don't already have it, that sort of conundrum. And so what are ways that you can get some of that work? Um, I think, at some level that works for all of us, whether you're just getting going or you're well established. Yeah. Um, it's still sort of the same, you know, find ways to, you know, even if it's you're volunteering your, your services for something when you're getting going, you know, try to make it a nonprofit. And so you're not taking real business away from people, but, but yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I've rep, yeah. I've rep for a long time and I feel like I've watched many stages of photographers there's established and there's new, yes, and they both offer benefits that the other might not have, but there's this constant rediscovery that every photographer has to keep doing throughout their career. You could be great in your first year. You better learn something new and keep growing to keep that up. Mm -hmm. That's something. Um, also, new photographers, I don't think are, there's a lot of benefits to it. People are looking for this like new golden, ticket of a shooter. Everyone's kind of looking for that new person. New people are also sometimes younger and they tend to be more savvy with social media, which is a big help. So I don't know. It's, it's, I, I was once told that a new photographer got paid 25 grand. I put this on my Ask Stern Rep Facebook group and there was a kind of a dialogue, a challenge of what are you talking about? A new photographer got 25 grand per day. And I can't say more about this because it was told to me in secrecy, but it's doable. So new, old, just educate yourself, research, that kind of thing. Well, and I think part of what you're getting at too is play to your strengths. You know, um, when I first moved yeah. to LA and I'd grown up in Iowa and, and then been in Chicago, everybody loved to think of me as like that mid Midwest nice guy. I'm not going to talk them out of that, right? So if that's how you want to think me, great, you know? Um, and so to your point about younger photographers and maybe more, uh, a little more social media savvy, yeah, double down on that, you know, play it up, whatever, whatever positive right. angles people want to interpret you. You know, they might have more, um, be able to be more nimble, like we're talking about the world becoming soon. He just left. Okay, so being more nimble, is something that we're having to deal with right now and younger or new photographers that might just be more natural for them so there might be good ways to it for sure for sure welcome back where'd you go <laughs> open window with screaming child coming, oh. coming through, so. but i better get rid of that uh okay well, i'm looking at these questions okay uh what type of this a lot of questions came in on this topic about email promos what type of email promo should we be sending right now? And I could just start off this answer with, you should still be sending. I'm hearing from clients that they want to hear from you and they have time right now. So keep sending. Um, you, I think it's empathetic and to be about the situation right now, we have to mention it. The other thing I always say, whether it's right during this COVID-19 crisis or not, is to pay attention to your audience. What kind of email do you want to be receiving? Assume that your clients, they're feeling what you're feeling. So you'd be sensitive to that. Are you still sending any yeah. promos, Jim? 
No, it's good to hear. I mean, I've definitely struggled with it. Um, one thing I'm almost afraid to ask is, is to figure out if people still have their jobs or not, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. So you, you're kind of afraid to ask, how's it going? I mean, I, I know I should, but it kind of depends on my, I think as I start back doing that probably next week, I'm going to reach out first to people that I feel are clients and, all, and also friends uh, versus people that I've just sort of, you know, been pursuing over the years. And um, yeah. I'm a little less comfortable there. It's yeah. a really easy um, time to bond that. with people. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. it's, it's like, there's a lot to say and people are like, yeah, me too. And so I think it's a, one more thing they're really looking for right now is new, new ideas, new work, new, new ways of thinking. So they're very open and looking around. Yeah. What, um, do you think it's safe to have shoots with a minimum or two or three person crew? No, 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 no. Do you agree, Jim? <laughs> yeah, legally we are not allowed to do that here in LA right now at least. Right. So, yeah, really the only option you have is, you know, your immediate family that you're quarantined with and your place. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, we have to be so sensitive for, there's the health issue. There's also people are struggling right now to stay healthy and maybe they're not healthy and people are dying. Like you can really hurt your own marketing and your own reputation if you start shooting right now and ignore what's going on. It's For sure. really yeah. big. And legally, I would not take that risk. And yeah. I don't know if a client should take that risk. Yeah. Well, and I think even as things start back, like I've, seen things about the film industry here in LA it could be September before they really relaunch things and they'll have these guidelines. But I'm thinking, well, you know, what will that be for still photographers and what could you do on a small scale? And I think we'll have to pay attention to what's ethical and legal as that comes back too. you know, right. are we right. kind of lumped in with them on that full on kind of production like that, or if we're doing something smaller, the way maybe you would do a stock shoot a little more gorilla style is is that okay normally i feel fine yeah. about stuff like that and you can get what you can get but coming back from this i think uh, it's a little more complicated yeah sure. i agree and a lot of this is going to be interesting next week with our producer because these are the questions like, what can you shoot let's let's ask michael yeah they'll have a bigger base of information for that right uh, what is your take on the remote shoot trend? Is this something photographers should consider for the near future? Absolutely. This is gonna, this could make or break a photographer. Being able to shoot remotely, your clients probably won't be there, especially if they have to travel, they won't be coming. So how are you gonna handle this? And I think it's really challenging. I don't know that there's the answers out there yet, but I hear things that they're coming. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that, Jim? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just sort of an extension of what we're already seeing, I guess, as far as, um, remote, you know, will it be a zoom call or can we, can we do better than that? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. you know, I've always had clients where maybe you'd have a creative director out, but the client couldn't make it or one client was here and the other isn't. And so you're shooting tethered and, and emailing JPEGs I've even had where on my phone I've you know, FaceTime and show something there's, it's not perfect, but especially for what I do with lifestyle stuff where you're trying to capture a moment, like there's nothing to kill the moment, like to stop and get approval. Before. It also, you know what, it slows things down and we have to incorporate that into our budget. Like yeah. just know a one day shoot could become a four day shoot. Well, and I think that circles around part of what we're getting at is that I think the types of shoots we're going to be doing going forward are going to be a little bit less productive, but maybe the maybe the the crew is smaller. Maybe your cost per day to do the shoot is a lot lower. But you're not going to be, I guess, depending on the quality of what you're trying to do. But you're probably not going to be cranking out as many things per day. For instance, okay. if you were trying to get those shots that you're shooting in real time to a remote client, that slows you down. And so yeah. right there, it's not going to be as efficient as it, as it would be if they were right. with you. So. And we're going to all have to adjust to that. That's coming. Yeah. Well, and I, I think clients will probably get into, 
what I hope that they kind of get into is more what's the idea you're trying to get across instead of this like super hard shot list of it needs to look like this. I mean, I, I was already trying to go there with a lot of clients anyways for things like social media shoots. And, you know, if you want more content out of a day, how flexible can you be about what it is? And just give me the ideas. Don't lock us into something really hard and fast for the shot. So I'm, I'm smirking because that leads into our next question. Uh, yeah. What do you see the future of our business looking like? There you go. So that's what we're talking about. Um, for me, it keeps coming back to the same thing we've been dealing with for a couple years now, more content, less budget. And how have we dealt with that before? We're really going to have to up our game and deal with it more. Um, new ideas, learn new skills, do video, do, do stills. It's like, and the remote situation, figure out, get technical, figure something out. Um, a lot of duo teams of photographers are coming up, that kind of stuff. Just uh, my point to this is a lot of work I believe is coming because it's all pent up. They have stuff they have to shoot. They're going to have to be shooting it. Mm -hmm. So expect that, but be ready with yeah. that. Yeah. And, and I think, I guess the only downside of that is I'm, I'm nervous that it'll squash rates down even farther than they have been. Um, but I'm not sure how much we can do about that. I think you just have to find ways to be able to create more content in the day to kind of counteract that or bring your overall costs down. Um, I think I've had a lot of ad agencies, friends at ad agencies kind of candidly tell me they struggle with how to stay relevant for their clients and create content for their clients. And to me, it has a lot to do with convince them to up their game for their social media. And but that gets dicey because anything goes as far as how much you want to pay for that kind of stuff and what they're willing to put into it. But the types of shoots we're talking about doing um, coming out of COVID would be probably similar to the types of things, that, the way you would approach something like that with social media, where you need to get them a lot of content in a day. Um, and I almost see that as more... Uh, more the way of the future, whether COVID had happened or not. Yeah, that's what I definitely, I've been dealing with it on Ask Stern Rep for a while. What's happening? And this is the same thing that's happening. It's just going to be possibly more extreme and more work at the same time. I always have this belief, and I think I'm right, of course, is the better your book, the more jobs you will get and the better budgets you will get. So the whole question always comes back to build your portfolio, have the best portfolio you can have. The, the rest kind of takes care of itself. You will get the jobs. That's, that's what I yeah. see. Whatever, whatever that job is or however they change. Yeah. You'll yeah. still be better position to get it. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And in bidding, you might bid against lower bids, which you might have to lower your bid to come closer. But basically, from what I've seen, they'll come back to you no matter where your estimate comes in. That's a whole uh, other topic. <laughs> Should have a whole show about that anyway. It looks like we've had a live question come in. Mm -hmm. um, a documentary photojournalism photographer is asking, is there a way to leverage this kind of experience in pursuit of commercial work in this competitive market? Um, I guess I think we're getting to that right now. I think we're talking about that, how to leverage that, how to adjust how you work to... Yeah, you, you make yourself more significant to the times. That's yeah. how you adjust. You get more work by being what our clients need. Yeah, I've Not always sure felt you have to be... Yeah, exactly. I've always felt you have to be a problem solver. Um, it's just, you know, that that changes into what, yeah. what that means. But, You've always got to be fine and there. and new new times you're always going to have to new problems to solve you have to be that kind of person as a photographer for sure yeah so we're we're getting to our last question this is good timing if you have more questions let us know but i think this might be our last what has been the most challenging during this time as an agent and as a person and as a photographer 
and most exciting. So most challenging and most exciting about this time for us. Hmm. I don't know, maybe you want to take that one first. Yeah. Um, for me, it's the same because challenging and exciting is how I try to live my life. I want to keep growing and to keep growing, I have to have get scared like of doing this today. It's not exactly my most comfort zone, but to take myself out of my comfort zone, if I feel scared by something, that just means I might be really loving it if I get over my fear. I read this book when I was younger, feel the fear and do it anyway. And I believe that like we can't cut ourselves short because we're challenged. So we don't become who we want to become. I want to have a life of purpose and meaning and that is how I do it. So to me, my challenging is the same as exciting. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think I really uh, was reminding myself uh, a big theme for me has been to uh, I'm really interested in people are kind of proactive about their lives and taking changes and not just kind of following the path they're given. And uh, that's always been a big interest for me personally in, in my personal work. Um, I'm not shooting right now, but it made me kind of realize, well, I need to look at what is it about those people that I admired and what, what part of that do I want to be part of my life and who I am and what I'm about. And sure. I think as photographers, we're so go, go, go as far as shoot, shoot, shoot. There's always this pressure you put on yourself. So it's been a little bit nice to have part of that. Like I can't do anything about that right now as far as creating more content, more content, you know, so to sort of yeah. just, internalize some of the things I've seen that have been uh, that have inspired me as I've been shooting. And I could see how that really affects your work when I was looking at your website. That's the feeling I got. Nice. So when you say it's personal work, I see how it's also your professional, your portfolio. That's the goal for sure. Yeah. And I think right now people, clients, they want to see that. What's really personal to you and what got you into this career you know, they want to, yeah, that's what I they want. It's, like it's you a said, personal it, time. You can definitely relate with people right now. Everybody has something universal that they're going through right now. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so where are we, Jim? Um, let's see. Do we want to take another question? There's a few that have come in. Uh, Elizabeth Karen. Another APA LA board member, do you think there is any recognition of how challenging it is to create when you have children right now? Who has a young child? I know. Elizabeth I really don't know how people like that are have jobs and kids. I my heart goes out to you. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, another one, one last one here from Rose. Uh, Jim, can you please speak to the bridge you must have crossed from wedding portrait in a commercial editorial? I'd love to know more on that even if offline. Um, I'll just real quick say that um, I, because I went into lifestyle, I think weddings are lifestyle, weddings are portraits. And so um, I find, I'm not, I'm very proud to say I used to shoot retail weddings and portraits. You know, that's a huge part of the personality. I wasn't very outgoing before I started doing that stuff. So um, that, I just think having the confidence to take those skills into wherever you go with it and lifestyle seemed like a natural progression for me from weddings. And so I think you just kind of approach it the same. You just get a group of friends together to start shooting lifestyle, just like you would have a group of friends at a wedding or a family at a wedding. So pretty similar. Sorry, I just got distracted. Um, That's right. What do you say? Oh, we said the future business. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, I always suggest to wedding photographers, not that you should be embarrassed about it, but make it a separate website. They don't mix. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's from the business side of this. Well, um, Andy, yeah. let me ask you a question. What yeah. are you most looking forward to post coronavirus and you know, when you can get back out there fully? And I think you could tell behind me that that's an easy answer. <laughs> baseball. I want baseball to come back. For sure. And everyone be healthy. Let's let's work on that. But this is what I really miss most. Going to a baseball game. Is Watch. Gonna... I play fantasy baseball, so I'm an oh, addict. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. I what think about you? For, 
Well, for me, I think uh, very specifically, I have a good friend, a creative director out in Colorado. I was out in Colorado right as things started to shut down, scheduled to go for a beer together at one of uh, my favorite pubs out there in Golden, Colorado for Coors Banquet. It's like a thing that we always do when we get together. And I'm really looking forward to being the day I can sit down and have that beer. It's so simple. I'm finding life so much simpler right now. Like I'm trying to calm down and watch like, I have passion fruit growing outside of my door right here. And I just try to stare at it sometimes because that calming, that uh, commercial that has the rain coming down. I'm like, yeah, we just got to stare at the live green sometimes. (laughs) Anyway, that's where I go. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you for being with us. And we look forward to doing this again next week. Uh, We are almost out of time. Thank you for doing this with me, Jim. Thank you. We will be doing this again with LA producer Michael Horta, who will be helping us sort through what is happening in the business now, how to plan for production needs in the future, and get ideas started in our new situation. He has new ideas. And all the safety precaution topics, etc., stuff like that. So let me know if you have any topics you want covered, and let me know on Ask Stern Rep. And see you next week. Same same bat time, same bat channel. Yes, and thank you, Andrea, for partnering with APA LA on this new series. Uh, we are all about advocating for our industry, and I know you are too. And so we port, we uh, appreciate your friendship on this. Um, we'd like to thank our sp- our sponsorship from Sammy's Camera, whose continued support enables us to bring you events like this. Thanks to our audience for your great questions. Please be sure to check out the APA Coronavirus Resource Hub on our website, and please join us again for this next week. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. We did it. Bye-bye.